This is my work from home and YouTube editing desk setup. Moving into a new house gave me a blank canvas to make the room exactly how I wanted it. It also made me think really, really hard about what I really want in this space. So I spent half of this year getting this desk almost exactly how I wanted it. There's also this little asterisk right here for a particular reason. So for today, let me give you a tour around this desk because it just might give you ideas for your own desk or room. Either way, let's get started. Full disclosure, I'll link every item I talk about in the video description just in case you wanted to check them out for yourselves. And if you are curious of how this entire room came to be as a whole and the process behind it instead of just this desk, my wife actually has the whole process of what we planned and how it ended up on her YouTube channel. So feel free to check that out if you're interested. I'll also link it down in the video description below. All right, back to just the desk. Where I lived previously with my parents, I had only one desk. This was where I would work my full-time job, then at night, edit and record my YouTube videos. And that would get really, really annoying because at night, I would have to clear my desk off, make sure it looks clean, and then record whatever product shot I had in mind for the day. Afterwards, during that same night or early in the morning, I would have to place everything back into the original spot to get ready for the next day of work. In this new space, I wanted to avoid doing all of that because it was super annoying and well, I'll be honest, I'm lazy. So I really don't want to have to do that all the time. It's a waste of time, honestly. I basically ended up separating my desk out into two separate desks. First one I used to get my work from home stuff done and edit my YouTube videos. And the other one is dedicated to only product shots of the latest tech gadget. The product shot desk is just an autonomous standing desk that I dress up depending on the shot I'm going for. Sometimes I'm feeling a fake plant, other times I'm feeling dumbbells and sometimes I'm feeling an empty desk for that plain minimal vibe. I stuck my old LifeX LED strips in the back just in case I wanted some kind of rainbow puke in the background of my videos. The standing functions of the desk really makes it easy to angle and adjust whatever product shot I'm trying to take. And overall, it suits the job I need it to do perfectly. Initially, I thought I could make do with just this one desk, but obviously this one desk wasn't enough. And so I added another one. One of the first things you'll notice about this workspace is the wall. I put these shiplap shaped felt right felt panels against the wall with double sided tape. And then I cut down the pieces where I needed to with a razor blade. These panels were supposed to help with echoing sound, but let's be honest, these panels aren't super thick, so they only help a little bit when it comes to echoes. But I thought they also provided aesthetic value. And by that, what I really mean is that they look pretty good and they definitely look better than the foam ones that can be bought off Amazon. Those always look like packing foam, at, at least to me. <laughs> my workstation desk is actually one of my favorite pieces in this room. There's actually a story behind it too, and I'll try to summarize it as fast as I can. My mother-in-law had this nice butcher block countertop that she no longer had a use for. So being the amazing, you know, fantastic son-in-law that I am, I offered to take it off of her since she was just going to get rid of it. She offered to stain the countertop and seal it, so I took her up on that offer and I think it looks great. Then I needed legs. I mean, I wasn't just gonna sit it on the floor and do work there. That would be tremendous back pain. After enjoying my autonomous standing desk, I did what anyone else would do. I bought the fully Jarvis standing desk legs. It took a good hour to get up and running and required just a Phillips head screwdriver and a power drill. Cue the Home Depot theme. After all that was done, I needed desk accessories. That's where Grove Made came in. Back in February, they actually reached out to me and during that time, I told them that I was moving and they were actually kind enough to send over a bunch of really cool accessories for the desk. And luckily what they sent over fit the exact look I was going for perfectly. There's this Grove Made monitor stand that creates more space on the desk and carves out a nice little nook on my desk. And the desk tray slides perfectly into the designated slot. If you're curious about what you see on my desk, check out the link in the video description. Grovemade really does make really cool desk accessories. I keep all my external storage in this tray, SSDs, hard drives, SD cards, you name it. The top tray usually holds my M1 12.9 inch iPad Pro or M1 MacBook Air when I'm not using them. 
Then I have another LifeX Z LED light strip on the back of this Grillmate monitor stand. You may think I'm a huge fan of LifeX light strips at this point, but honestly, while the color they give off and their features are great, they wouldn't be my first choice. I'm just a cheapskate and I've owned these for the last four years. So I'm just reusing these and sticking new double-sided tape behind them. I'm also using a Grove made felt mouse pad that I think contrasts nicely with the desk along with their leather mouse pad on top. My keyboard and mice of choice is the MX Keys and MX Master 3. This mouse and keyboard combo enables me to quickly switch between my work laptop and my personal laptop with literally a click of a button on both devices. In the morning, I tend to drink a cup of coffee at my desk, so I have these felt coasters by Grovemade as well. So for this next part, I thought was a little overkill, but in this work from home environment, I knew I needed a good video calling setup. So I have a Shure SM7B microphone connected to a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. To minimize cable clutter, I bought an angled USB-C cable so that the Scarlett 2i2 can sit close to the side of the monitor stand and so the XLR cable can go down the back of the desk instead of taking up some space in the front. I'm using a blue compass microphone arm because I like that you can easily hide the XLR cable inside of the frame of this mic arm. And I like how minimal the mic arm looks. It's literally just a big, blocky arm. And beside that is a Grovemade pen that I use if I needed to write something down. Let's now move on to the monitor situation. One is an older 4K monitor from LG that they no longer sell. I'm planning to replace the stand on that monitor with a black monitor arm soon, since this white stand literally stands out at this desk. And the other monitor is the LG 27GL83AB, 27 inch Ultra Gear QHD IPS 1 millisecond NVIDIA G Sync compatible gaming monitor black, which I ripped away from my gaming PC because I needed extra screen real estate. This monitor situation is temporary and I'll probably revisit it eventually in a desk setup 2.0 video. For now, this is the best I got. 144 Hertz is definitely not necessary for work or video editing for that matter, but it's a temporary fix. The monitor stand holding up the LG 27GL83A is this budget Vivo monitor stand. It's a really basic stand, it wasn't too hard to set up, and it works exactly for my usage, which is keeping it exactly still, but being able to move it if I absolutely need to. There's also this Samsung wireless charger I use to charge my phone and wireless earbuds, but if I were to redo this, I'd probably get one that sits flat instead, because it's actually pretty hard to charge AirPods on this thing. You kind of have to angle them weird to get a bit more height on them. You may have also noticed this stem sticking out of the monitor, but the monitor already has a stand, right? That's actually a desk clamp monopod. This model in particular has a ball head, so I can easily slap on a camera and angle it any way I like. Usually I just slap my Sony a7C on there with a cam link and it makes an overkill webcam. When I'm not using my a7C as a webcam, I can quickly remove the camera and just decrease the height of the monopod and hide it behind the monitor. You may have noticed that there are a ton of things going on with this desk, which normally leads to a ton of cable clutter that looks like it could properly home multiple birds or even a rat. And that would be true here too, if I didn't make the effort to clean it all up. I mounted an anchor power strip beneath the desk with double-sided Velcro strips, then plugged in everything that I needed and held the cables down using these cable ties with adhesive backing. With these, I just tie down the cables the best I can and boom. It's way cleaner than if I had nothing down there at all. So I still work a full-time job along with making YouTube videos, right? So this desk had to be able to easily transition between work and YouTube. So I wanted a solution that worked easily between my work laptop and my personal laptop and make it very easy to transition between the two. And so this is what I came up with. I bought this Anchor USB-C hub with all the ports that I needed a USB-C extension cable, and used double-sided tape to mount it underneath my desk. Then I routed everything I needed through this single USB-C hub. Monitor, ethernet, mic, and power all through this single cable. This made it very easy to swap between my work laptop and my MacBook Air for editing with literally a change of a single cable. The chair that I use in between my desks and the chair that, well, I'm actually sitting on right now is the Herman Miller Aeron chair. These things normally retail for around $1,000 US. Obviously the price is insane and makes me want to panic, but I bought mine used from an office liquidator site for 400 something dollars. And this thing has honestly been the best office chair that I've ever had. My butt doesn't hurt sitting in this thing for over eight hours a day. And it's the best one durability wise. Uh, I noticed very little wear with it 
And when I used faux leather chairs from Office Depot, those fell apart within a year of me working from home. So really, I honestly can't recommend the Aeron chair enough. But buy it used though, I don't think I'd ever buy it for retail price. So why did I want my desk exactly this way? Well, my wife and I designed the entirety of this room specifically to make the room feel like a room in someone's actual house, but at the same time, looks really cool and is functional as a YouTube studio. And plus, we'd both be complaining if the room was a complete mess all the time with cables and wires and lights everywhere. Basically, what I'm saying is this room had to look good enough that if a guest walked into it, they wouldn't think it looks off compared to the rest of the house. The room has to be aesthetic enough to be used as a backdrop for YouTube videos and have enough space to store all of my camera equipment without it looking like a total mess. But the room ended up great and because of how the room looks and the placement of everything, I can quickly start a video from this desk with minimal setup time, like I did in my last video, or be the overachiever on work calls with fantastic video and audio quality. Because believe it or not, the shot you see right here normally takes a good 30 minutes to set up properly, which I am ashamed of admitting because that's actually a big chunk of time. If I wanted to, this desk enables me to start shooting in about five minutes of prep time. Okay, usually when you get to this point of people's setup videos, they're done, right? They're telling you to like the video, subscribe, and ask you how you feel about it. But honestly, if you wanna do any of those things right now, feel free, I don't, I don't mind, right? But I'm pretty much gonna tell you what I hate about this setup so far, so that if you ever wanted to do something similar, you won't run into the same issues I did. This section of the video is what I'd call the buyer's remorse section of this video. I'd like to start off with these felt panels. These things, for the last five months that I've owned them, have fallen off three to four times. I think it's because I have so many squished together that sometimes they bow out and go crashing down. So if you're interested in these, I'd suggest smaller designs or using more double-sided tape. I was pretty stingy with the double-sided tape. For me, I might tear these down if they fall down again out of sheer frustration or replace them with some actual sound panels. And plus, I put these felt panels up before I painted this room and I'm not sure if this gray fits well with the paint anymore. Initially, I only had one monitor at this desk, so I added the second one for some temporary additional screen real estate. But because I cable managed before adding the second monitor, there's some cables that need to also be cleaned up still. Also, make sure if you're going with a standing desk that you use a power strip with a long enough cord, or else it'll limit how far you can extend the standing desk legs without tugging on the power strip wires. And lastly, I think I need to rethink my cable strategy. Currently, all my cables route through this center area, which makes it a cluttered mess. So I need to figure out how I can cut down on cables and what's plugged into this power strip. Okay, ran time over. I like how this turned out. It took six months, but it's at a good enough spot that I was willing to share it with everyone. It's not perfect, but that's the thing, right? Once you've changed out just one item, you just wanna change out everything. I'd like to think that this is 85 to 90% done, and this is what I want, but we all know that some changes are most likely still in the works. But what do you personally think of this desk setup? Do you like it? What should I change if I ever did a future round two of this desk? Did I try anything that you'll likely implement in your own work from home or desk space? What's your ideal desk setup? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And well, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you all next time. Bye.